Hi kids, welcome back to GraviCalc, where each week we build a new digital logic circuit using Gravitrax marble runs. We're doing this to find out how computers and other electronics work on the inside. This is the fifth lesson in the series, and today we're going to build the XNOR gate. If you haven't watched the previous four lessons, you'll want to watch them first to familiarize yourself with how Gravicalc circuits work, because I won't be explaining everything again in this lesson. In case you're new to my channel, I'm the Masked Marble, and my videos are about all things Gravitrax. I wear a mask so the bad guys won't recognize me. But then I was thinking, nobody else is wearing a mask, so maybe that makes me stand out more? Maybe with my mask I'm more recognizable. Hmm. We have been learning the seven simple logic gates. This week we will build our last logic gate, the XNOR gate. Remember all the names of the gates? Say them with me. Fred, Wilma, Barney, Betty, Pebbles. Wait, that's the wrong list. Oh, here they are. And, or, XOR, not. NAND, NOR, XNOR. As we discussed last week, the N in XNOR stands for NOT. So an XNOR gate is an XOR gate combined with a NOT gate. We also noticed that the symbol for the XNOR gate is a combination of the XOR and NOT circuit symbols. Our Gravicalc XNOR circuit performs the first half of the calculation first, which is the XOR part of the circuit. It stores that result in the position of the second switch by repositioning the switch if necessary. Then the circuit finishes up the second half of the calculation, which is the not part of the circuit. The clock marble comes by after the X or part of the circuit is complete with its calculation. And it uses the position of the second switch to perform the not calculation. Together, the X or and not calculations combine to make an X nor gate and so we're going to use the front two slots in the marble launcher as our two inputs remember we call the left slot input a and the right slot input b and the back slot will be our clock marble we must always have a marble in this back slot even if there's no marbles in the front slots say do you know why these circuits are called logic gates why aren't they called logic doors or logic windows. Well, they sort of act like the gate you may have on your backyard fence. Or maybe you've seen a gate at the entrance to a dog park or a gate that drops at a railroad crossing to prevent traffic from passing through when a train is going by. Think about what these gates do. They open and close to let something through, right? If the gate is closed, nothing passes through. But if the gate is open, things can pass through the gate. Well, how do logic gates act as gates? Well, logic gates don't consist of teensy little hinged gates that open and close. Rather, it's an analogy. Jesus used the analogy of a gate when he said that he is the gate for the sheep and that whoever enters through him will be saved. He said that those who trust in him will be like sheep that go in and out to find pasture. Now Jesus wasn't saying that he swings on hinges for farm animals to go through. He was making a point that when we come to him, we find a form of safety and security that is like a sheep being able to go through a sheep gate into their pen to keep them in a safe place. And we are provided for just like a sheep that finds grass to eat in a pasture. The analogy of a gate tells us that if we approach God through faith in Jesus, we will be saved from God's wrath against our sinful behaviors. It helps us understand that just like a gate can shut things out or let things pass through, if we go to God through Jesus, we won't be shut out. But if we refuse to acknowledge Jesus, we will be shut out because God gets to choose the method by which he saves us. And it is incumbent on us to cooperate with God's choice. God has chosen Jesus as the gate of salvation and he proved it by raising Jesus from the dead after a Roman crucifixion. We are not God, 
So we don't get to choose the gate that God has designed for our salvation. Our choice is limited to whether or not we are going to enter the gate that God has opened for us. So in digital logic, when we use the term logic gate, the word gate is also an analogy. It means the logic gates act like a gate. There are not miniature hinged gates inside computer chips. Rather, the term logic gate describes how the circuits control the flow of ones and zeros from input to output. Logic gates don't let the signals through all the time. Sometimes they close and don't let the signals through. Suppose we had a first logic gate whose output was connected to the input of a second logic gate. Could both logic gates perform their calculations at the same time? Or think of it this way, would the first logic gate have an output ready to pass on to the second gate when the first logic gate hasn't performed its calculation yet? Of course not. The first logic gate has to perform its calculation. Then it can pass along the result to the second logic gate so it can perform its calculation. So we see that digital logic circuits must wait for their input signals to be ready before they calculate. They do this by calculating in sync with a clock signal. The clock signal in a digital logic circuit gives time for the outputs from the previous logic gates to arrive at the front door of the current logic gate before the current logic gate runs its calculation. Remember last time we said that in real computers and other electronics, an electric clock signal is what makes the input signals move through the logic gates from input to output? We said it's kind of like an inchworm that moves forward by scrunching up and then stretching out. Well, a clock signal in a computer moves the circuit forward by scrunching up to one and then stretching out to zero. It does this over and over. The clock signal actually looks like this. It goes up and down from one to zero to one to zero to one to zero to one to zero. This up and down clock signal acts like a gate that opens then shuts, then opens then shuts, then opens then shuts. Each up and down cycle of the clock, it feeds the next set of inputs to the logic circuit to run a calculation. Now let's see how this concept applies in our Gravicalc circuits. First, we simulate the gate function of a logic gate by having a marble launcher which must be pressed before the marbles will roll. Could you imagine what would happen if we didn't have that launcher acting as a gate to hold the marbles back? As soon as we placed the marbles on the track, they would roll. Their timing would be off because they would not be rolling together. This would make the circuits give incorrect results. So the launcher acts like a closed gate, preventing the marbles from rolling forward until we press it down, causing the gate to open for all the marbles in the slots of the launcher. Second, Gravicalc uses a clock marble as a timer in two-step logic gates to get the second half of the calculation to wait until the first part of the calculation has completed. For example, in the XNOR circuit, the XOR half of the circuit runs first, then the NOT half of the circuit runs next. And third, the clock marble gives us a way to output a marble when there is no marble in the input, like in the NOT gate. Now let's run our XNOR gate circuit. We're going to run all four combinations of inputs, and as we do, you need to fill out the results in the four rows of your logic table, just as you've done before. I'm sure you remember how to fill out the logic table from the prior two lessons. So first, let's set up the track with a marble in input A and no marble in input B. Now let's run the track. What is the output? Write the result in the first row of your logic table. There is no marble in the output slot, so the output is zero. So your logic table first row should read one, zero, zero. Now, set input A as zero and input B as one and run your track. 
Okay, what result did you get? Write that in your logic table. Again, the output is zero. So your second row in the table should read zero, one, zero. Next, set both input A and input B to one and run the track. This time, your output is one and your logic table should read one, one, one. Lastly, run the track with no marble in either input. What do you think is going to happen? Well, because of the not part of the XNOR circuit, we end up with a marble in the output. The output is one. This row of the logic table should read zero, zero, one. We have now generated a logic table for the XNOR gate. So great job, you've reached a milestone. You have built all seven basic logic gates. Next week, we're going to learn how computers actually count numbers in the binary system. And the week after that, we're going to start putting these basic logic gates together to build calculators that can do things like actually add two numbers together. Okay, see you next week.